Lord willing, the creek don't rise, it'll work then. Yes, we are. Let's try this once again. Good afternoon. My name is Mike Atwabic, and I am speaking with Deacon Harold Pardue of the Cathedral Parish of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's it. Well, first of all, I appreciate you taking your time. Um, what exactly is a deacon? A deacon is one of the uh, three levels of ordination in the Catholic Church. You have deacons and priests and bishops. The word deacon comes from the Greek diakonia, which means servant. Okay. So basically, we are servants. What is the main difference between a priest and a deacon? What can a deacon do? What can't a deacon do? Deacons are ordinary ministers of baptism. We can preside at weddings without a mass and at funerals without a match, without a, without a mass. So I affectionately say hatch, match, and dispatch, <laughs> but uh, all, in all good humor. But uh, basically, that's it. We cannot consecrate the Eucharist at Mass. We cannot hear confessions. We cannot anoint the sick. So, okay. If a priest consecrates the Eucharist prior to the Mass, you can distribute the communion. Absolutely. We're ordinary ministers of uh, distributing the communion. Okay. What is meant by Mass in Catholic terminology? Mass is uh, comes from Missa, and that's... Uh, it's the, the Mass is separated into the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And uh, at the Eucharist, of course, the Word is similar to most all Christian denominations. We have certain readings uh, assigned from year to year. And the Eucharist is where the priest, by the power of the Holy Spirit, consecrates the bread and wine, as Jesus did at the Last Supper, to become the body and blood of Christ. And that particular... Uh, event is a large word called transubstantiation, which is a word that the church has developed to explain what actually happens. Okay. And this word, transubstantiation, is not found in the Bible. You will not find it in Scripture, no. Okay. So how does one, as a Catholic, prove to someone of another faith that it actually happens? Well, I don't know that you can prove it except to say that Jesus instituted it and has told his disciples to do this in memory of me. And that's what we're doing for the last 2,000 years. We're still doing it today. It's a, it's a matter of faith. Okay. Uh, and uh, you can say you don't believe it, and that's God has given us free will. Okay. He's also given us the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ instituted the Eucharist, and there's many people who do not believe it. And that's, okay. uh, they can, that's what the free will is. Okay. Catholics are required to attend Mass every Sunday or Saturday night, yeah. and then every Holy Day of Obligation. Yeah. Can you explain what the Holy Days of Obligation are? They're uh, Holy Days that the Church has established that are very special days, uh, like the Immaculate Conception. The, uh, there's, there's five uh, Holy Days besides the 52 Sundays of the year. Okay. And... Uh, August 15th, the Assumption, December 8th, the Immaculate Conception, Christmas, which does not always fall on a Sunday, Easter, of course, which always falls on a Sunday, okay. so it's uh, uh, required. But there are, the church says that we need to attend Mass on these holy days okay. to give proper respect and worship to God. What about daily Mass? You see a lot of Oh, yes, yeah. a lot of older folks, especially yeah. attending daily mass. Those who have the time, and that is a great thing to do, a great holy and pious thing to do. Mass is offered every day of the year. Some uh, in the world, someplace right now, mass is being offered. There's mass okay. being offered somewhere in the world every minute of every day. Okay. So, but the daily masses aren't required. The daily masses are not required. They're just above and beyond. Yeah. People who want to grow in holiness uh, and be strengthened by the Eucharist. Okay. What, in your background, led you to become a deacon? What, oh, what turning point? Yeah. Well, to become a Christian, number one, I was uh, wasn't baptized till I was 22, and I was searching for some meaning in life. Okay. And I found it in the Catholic Church in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And uh, to become a deacon, uh, a priest friend of mine and a lay friend of mine 
both uh, said that the God was calling me to be a deacon, which I didn't believe at the time. I said, I don't, th I don't think so. This little country boy? Well, they said, uh, yeah, yes. So I started the training thinking that it would become obvious that this is not what the Lord wanted me to do. <laughs> but the further I got along, I said, oh, dear, I think this might be what I'm called to. And then I said, oh, heck, I'm not sure I want to do this. <laughs> but I said, if it's what God wants and I don't do it, I'm in deep kimchi. <laughs> so uh, I, I proceeded and everything fell into place. So I'm saying it must be God's idea because it sure wasn't mine. Okay. Uh, deacons can get married. Correct? Deacons can be married if they're married before they're ordained. Okay. Once they're ordained, they cannot marry after that. Okay. If my wife, uh, I've been married for 44 years, and should my wife die, heaven forbid, 